welcome to Follows with Ray. I'm Rachel and today I'm going to be sharing with you the newest collection from Wildflower Lacquer. It's called The Classics. Before we get started, if you enjoy seeing me review Wildflower Lacquer here on my channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed, I hope you'll consider it. Every week I upload new videos about nail polish content. So The Classics is a seven piece collection of polishes inspired by famous actresses and singers. I'm actually pretty early with my video this time, so the collection doesn't launch until April 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and you can continue shopping through April 23rd. Every polish I'm sharing with you today is going to be available as an uncapped pre-order, meaning you don't have to rush to the Wildflower site as soon as the shop opens. You can take your time, you don't have to worry about stuff selling out. I'm also going to be sharing with you a 2.0 version of a polish that was super popular and sold out last year called Slug Bug. So today we're going to be looking at Slug Bug 2.0. It is going to be available as a pre-order as well so you don't have to worry about it selling out. However, there is a limit of two bottles that will be sold per order. For two bottles per person PayPal address. <laughs> As soon as I saw this collection, a few other recently released wildflowers kind of popped in my head, so I did add some comparisons in for this video, and hopefully that'll be helpful for you. If you like seeing the comparisons, let me know down in the comments. All right, all together we have eight gorgeous polishes to look at today, so let's go ahead and get into the swatches. So this is actually my first video where I'm getting to test out my new camera and lens. Yay, I'm so excited. I feel like in general, this camera gives you a much better idea of what the polishes will actually look like in person. So if the video looks different, for better or worse, <laughs> that is why I'm still getting acquainted to it. Hopefully it's a improvement. <laughs> so this first polish is called Marilyn. It's inspired by Marilyn Monroe and it's described as being a tomato red base with subtle copper to gold to green shifting shimmer and scattered holographic flakes. Each of the polishes in this collection individually will be $13 or if you'd like to purchase the entire set it's going to be $87.50. So on application, Marilyn had a beautiful, highly pigmented jelly formula. It was super squishy and easy to apply, but you still got a lot of pigmentation right away, which I was very impressed with. I actually reached full opacity with this one in two coats. I thought it was going to be a three coater. I can't see people who have longer nails or maybe who do super thin coats needing three, but I think most people will be good in two. So here is what Marilyn looks like built up in two coats with a glossy top coat on the full hand swatch. And you can see there the gorgeous shimmer. In most lighting, most of the time when I had this on my nails, I saw the copper to gold shift. But at extreme angles, I could see some of the shift to green as well. And here is what Marilyn looks like outside in the sunshine. In the bright lighting, the holographic sparkle just really glows. I love this polish. It's, mm, I don't know. You'll have to wait till the end to see which ones I choose as my favorites. But this was definitely a standout for sure. I absolutely love these fun, bright reds, especially as we get closer to summer. Pictured are two coats of Marilyn with a glossy top coat. So as soon as I had Marilyn on my nails, I was reminded of I was once a candy <laughs> from the Stay Golden Collection release last year. So Marilyn's on the left. I was once on the right. Marilyn has those hollow flakes, which I was once does not. I would also say the base of Marilyn appears to be slightly deeper than I was once, which is a little bit brighter. And in the description, they both shift gold and green, but Marilyn also shifts copper and I was once also shifts red. This next stunner is called Aretha, and it's inspired by Aretha Franklin. It's described as being a yellow gold jelly base with copper to gold shifting crystal flakes. Oh, I was hyped when I saw this in the bottle. I am a huge fan of yellow polishes. I'll take all I can get, and this one kind of reminded me of Glisten, which came out in the Tangled Tinsel Mystery Bags, which I have and love. So I was happy to see another really bright, fun yellow 
from Wildflower. So mostly what we see in here is a gorgeous yellowy, brassy gold flake, but depending on your lighting, sometimes the flakes almost shift to like a more coppery shade. And in bright lighting, you see that they kind of appear to be green. So really cool combination of colors in this one and definitely, definitely unique. On application, this one had a wonderful jelly formula. Excuse the fuzzy. <laughs> it went on super easily. I think some people could get away with two coats for this one, but I wanted all those flakies I could get. So I did go in for three and reached full opacity. I think this is gonna be another one that I just am not gonna be able to resist wearing once we get to summer again. It's just such a bright, fun shade. So here, built up in three coats with a glossy top coat, you can see that those yellow flakes just completely cover the nail. This is a flaky bomb. Because of that, you may want to pair it with a smoothing top coat just to get a beautiful glass-like shine. I just used a regular top coat here and it looked beautiful. There was no texture, but next time I think I'd add that smoother just to plump it out a bit. And here's what it looks like with some sunlight. And you can see that shift to orange. It just glows. Such, such, such a stunning polish. And you can see it shift there from that orangey hue to like a lemony yellow. And then here's what Aretha looks like in some lower outdoor shaded lighting. You all, I did not want to take this off my nails. If you're a yellow polish lover, I think this is one you must have. Pictured our three coats of Aretha with a glossy top coat. So I did want to show it next to Glisten, which was released in last year's Tangled Tinsel Mystery Bags because I know a lot of people missed out on that. And that's one reason I'm doing these comparisons. It's not because they're dupes. Um, none of these are dupes, but it's just, if you missed out on the first polish, maybe one in this collection will satisfy that craving. So these base color wise are really, really close. Obviously Glisten has hollow flakes and then Aretha has those shifting flakes. Depending on your lighting, Aretha looks a little bit more orange or a little bit more green, but I would say overall, both are that bright, beautiful yellow once you have them in bright lighting. Continuing with our rainbow order here, next up is Patsy, which is inspired by Patsy Klein. And it's described as being a dark teal base with gold to green to blue shifting shimmer. Technically, this is a teal version of Is That an Ascot? But it's so pigmented that you can't really tell. <laughs> but in case you were wondering, there you go. So I was so excited to see a Patsy Klein polish. I don't think I've ever had a Patsy Klein polish and I love Patsy Klein. Guess who sang crazy at her fifth grade talent show? Me. <laughs> crazy, I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. Oh, don't even get me started. <laughs> so, woo, Patsy is pigmented. <laughs> this was incredibly beautiful on that first coat. In fact, if you've got shorter nails, you might be okay with this one in one coat. I did go in for two and it was flawless. And I don't think anyone is gonna need more than two coats for this one. I definitely recommend a base coat, although I didn't get any staining. I think you probably will if you don't use a base coat. So here is what two coats of Patsy looks like with a glossy top coat in my studio lighting. You see all of that gorgeous shift from a teal, your, the cuticle of my nail, to green, to gold. Oh, it's super shifty and just dark and bright at the same time. Does that make sense? I know it doesn't. I know it doesn't. And here's what Patsy looks like in some other lighting. <laughs> this is one of the polishes that I enjoyed wearing so much. I had to give it the full tour. So this is some more indoor lighting for you. And I feel like in this video, you can see the shift to teal a little bit better. And then here is what Patsy looks like in some sunlight. Look at that glow. In sunlight, it definitely looks a little bit brighter. So this is one that's gonna kind of look a little different depending on the lighting situation you're in. But in that bright lighting, you get a whole lot of that gorgeous gold shift. And then you move your hand around, you can see the green. And then you keep moving your hand around, you can see the blue. For a non-green polish lover, this is beautiful. I think I'm team green now. <laughs> Pictured our two coats of Patsy with a glossy top coat. 
So the closest thing I could find in my collection to Patsy was You Grackle Me Up, which came in last year's For the Birds collection. In the bottle, in person, they look very similar, but on camera, they do not look so similar. And I knew the base color was different. You Grackle Me Up is black or almost black, and Patsy has a teal base, but the shimmer kind of reminded me of each other, so I said, hey. What the heck? I feel like there's probably something that's a little bit closer that Wildflowers come out with, but I couldn't find it. So we're taking a look at these two. They're very different, but hopefully that's helpful. <laughs> Up next, we've got Billy, which is inspired by Billy Holiday, and it's described as being a smoky gray leaning lavender base with pink to gold to green shifting shimmer and scattered holographic flakes. Again, each of these is going to be $13, or if you want the whole set, you can get that for $87.50. So I was, first of all, just thrilled to see so many shifting shimmer hollow flakes. That's my favorite finish. And Wildflower gave us a ton of those in this collection. I love that Taylor describes this as a smoky gray leaning lavender. I couldn't come up with a better description if I tried, which I couldn't anyway, but <laughs> definitely can't. That's nail on the head. Perfect for this polish. It looks lavender in the bottle, but once I got it on my nails and I think it might be my undertones personally, it might differ person to person. It really did look very gray, like a lavender leaning gray on me. So on application, this one I would say is the sheerest out of this collection. I built it up to three coats and still could see a little bit of nail line at certain angles. So if that's something you're not looking for, you might want to pair this with a blurring base coat. But if you like those light, soft, ethereal look on the nails, then you might absolutely love this in three coats on its own. Wow, look at that shimmer. This is a really beautiful combination, especially for this time of year. Like right now I'm looking out my window, it's kind of rainy and this is like perfect for that. So here's what Billy looks like built up in three coats with the glossy top coat. You see a lot of that gorgeous reddish shimmer and then you can see some of the gold there as well. And then here is what Billy looks like in some sunlight and in bright lighting, that pink shimmer. It almost looks red, really pops. And as you move your hand around, it shifts. Oh, just such a soft, beautiful polish. Also very work appropriate. If you work in a setting where you have to wear colors that are kind of chill, this one's perfect for that. Pictured are three coats of Billy with a glossy top coat. So Billy kind of reminded me of Ikigai, which is on the right. That came out in this year's anniversary collection. I would say the base of Billy is a lot more gray leaning. Yes, Ikigai is dusty, but Billy is super dusty. <laughs> I would also say that Ikigai has so many hollow flakes. Billy has hollow flakes too, but it's more of like a hollow sparkle. And Ikigai is more opaque and Billy is a little bit more sheer. They also have different shifts. They both have that bright, beautiful pink shift, but Billy, I found when pulled away from indirect lighting, also had that beautiful shift to like gold and copper as well, which I didn't see as much in Ikigai. Up next is Judy, which is inspired by the amazing Judy Garland. I don't know why in my head, every time I read the name of this polish, I think of Judge Judy. <laughs> Anyway, Judy is described as being a deep maroon base with purple to pink to gold to green shifting shimmer and scattered hollow flakes. Yes, give me all the shifting shimmer, all the hollow flakes. So in the bottle, yes, this is beautiful, but on the nail, it is jaw-droppingly gorgeous. I was not prepared for how much I absolutely love this polish. I am so not in the mood for anything dark right now, but this kind of put me in the mood because it was another one I just didn't want to take off. Judy had a perfect formula. It was beautifully opaque in two coats, and I can't see anyone needing more than two coats. If you've got nails that are shorter than mine, maybe you could even get away with one coat for this one too, but I did feel like the second coat deepened up the color quite a bit. In the bright lighting, you get a lot of the purple shimmer, but in different kinds of lighting, you can see all of the other shifts too, and they're so, so beautiful. So here is what Judy looks like built up in two coats under my studio lighting and you can see a deep dark i feel like it's it just looks dark purple in bright lighting but a deep dark purplish base and then all of that gorgeous purple shimmer running throughout and then this was another one i just had to give the full tour so here's what it looks like in a different 
indoor lighting. Um, here you can really see all those other shifts to gold, green, and pink as well. Um, I didn't see those shifts everywhere, but when I caught them, my goodness, they were stunning. Stunning. And then here's what it looks like in sunlight. Also so beautiful. The way that those hollow flakes twinkle in that bright purple base. Sorry for the odd angle of my nails right now, but I just had to show you the shift in the sunlight. It's too pretty. Pictured are two coats of Judy with a glossy top coat. And then the closest thing I could find in my collection to Judy was the Croning, which came out in the Upper Creek Volume 5 collection that's shown on the right here. The Croning has a shimmer that is much more pink leaning, whereas the purple shimmer in Judy is a lot more of your primary purple. The Croning also has a darker colored base. It looks like it has a really dark purple base, whereas Judy has a maroon base. Is that right? um a deep maroon base yes but you can see it's not quite as deep as the croning and of course both have those sparkly hollow flakes three more beautiful polishes to look at this one is called audrey and it's inspired by audrey hepburn it's described as being a deep berry pink base packed with holographic flakes this one i was also very excited to see because it is the same finish as glisten um, which i showed you earlier in the video it was the gorgeous yellow holographic flaky polish this one so you know also has the same finish as Painting the Roses Red, Intelligence, Twinkling Tinsel, although that one also has a little bit of shimmer, but basically it's just a bright, beautiful, vibrant base and tons and tons and tons of hollow flakes. <sighs> no surprise. I love this one. <laughs> On application, I found that this one applied very similarly to Glisten and Painting the Roses Red. It was very opaque for a jelly on that first coat, definitely highly pigmented, so wear a base coat. And I reached full opacity in two coats. I found with all of these polishes that I wanted to add a third to see if it would do anything, but it didn't really change anything. So two coats for me, if you've got longer nails, maybe three, maybe. So here is what Audrey looks like with a glossy top coat. I found that all of the polishes with this finish dry down a little bit flat and thirsty. They're not textured at all, um, but they do benefit from pairing them with a glitter smoother just to plump them out and to keep them looking shiny for a long time. Look at that sparkle. It looks like a glitter polish to me, like a glitter bomb, but it's not. I love it. And now, of course, we're looking at Audrey in the sunlight. The hollow is extra sparkly in that bright light. This polish is the one that I wore earlier this week. If you attended my live stream, I know a lot of people that went were like, oh my gosh, what's on your nails? It was Audrey and I wore it for a couple days. It was that fabulous. Pictured are two coats of Audrey with a glossy top coat. And I didn't really have anything to compare for this one. And the final polish in this collection, before we take a look at Slugbug, is called Lucille. It's inspired by Lucille Ball, and it's described as being a dusty rose pink base with pink to gold to green shifting shimmer and subtle linear holographic. So the base for this one is another shade that I think is extremely work appropriate if you're on the lookout for a beautiful soft nude shade, especially for springtime. I think this will fit the bill perfectly. It has a lot of yellow undertones in the base, which I found was really flattering against my skin tone. I love the way it looked on me. And the shimmer is kind of, although you can see it shifting, it's kind of on the subtle side, kind of like how it uh, was in Marilyn. So on application, I found that this had a very creamy base. I was expecting it to be a three coater because it was such a light shade, but I actually reached full opacity in just two coats. If you've got longer nails, there's a chance you'll need three, but I actually think two will be pretty good for most. Look at that gorgeous shimmer, it just sparkles. I love the linear hollow too. So here's what two coats of Lucille looks like with a glossy top coat in my studio lighting. This is another one that I think will look different depending on your lighting and your undertones. In indoor lighting, I felt like this was a nude, almost taupey base that leaned strongly pink. But then once I got it into sunlight, it looked a lot more obviously pink, if that makes sense. I feel like both are color accurate. It just kind of depends on your lighting. 
So here is a look at what Lucia looks like in the sunlight. And you can really see all of that gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous hollow and the, how the base color just brightens up in the sunlight. Still a very sweet, soft nude shade, but now that we're in bright lighting, we get some of that sparkle. Pictured our two coats of Lucille with a glossy top coat and no comparisons for this one either. I didn't have anything like it in my Wildflower collection. And the final polish I have to share with you today is not part of the Classics collection. It's its own separate release and it's called Slugbug 2.0. It's described as being a deep red base with subtle purple to magenta to orange multi-chrome shimmer. It's going to retail for $13 as well. So when this released last year, I was like, yeah, I've got to get my hands on it. And then I like got all revved up for the sale. I purchased it. I got it in my hands and I was like, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. And then I was scared to wear it because I was afraid of the staining. Well, then I had to swatch it for this video. So I finally got to put it on and oh my gosh, it has changed my life. <laughs> my life is better with this polish in it. So if you grab nothing else from this collection, even if you don't like red polishes, please, 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 please grab this one. Seriously, y'all, it's a game changer. It's on my list of favorite polishes of 2022. There's nothing like it. It is perfection. Perfection on application. <clears throat> Are you seeing this? <laughs> Taylor, what have you done? I want a whole collection of this. Lots of this in lots of colors. Wow. <laughs> Wow, it was fully opaque in the first coat. I had no visible nail line, but I did go in for a second to deepen the color. And oh my gosh, I could have left this on forever. It was so beautiful. The base is so dark and vampy, and I don't see how it's so opaque and you get so much shift and glow from the shimmer. It's like magic. So here's what two coats of Slugbug 2.0 looks like with a glossy top coat. I will say both formulations of this, the original and the 2.0, which I'm showing you today, do dry down very, very flat to almost like a satin finish. I, I you could always leave it at that original finish, but I will say you don't get the same shift in the shimmer with that. It looks so beautiful with a glossy top coat. And here's what it looks like in the sunlight again the glow from the shimmer and it looks red and then you move your hand around and you can see the orange shift as well. I'm out of words. I guess you'll just have to buy it and see for yourself. So pictured are two coats of Slugbug 2.0 with a glossy top coat. And because I purchased the original, I did want to compare those for you. On the left is original Slugbug. On the right is Slugbug 2.0. When Taylor made this originally, she didn't write down the recipe. So she was afraid she might not be able to dupe it. But hooray for everyone. She was able to. I saw no difference between the original and the 2.0 version of this polish. Finish, formula, finish look application, they were the same. I can't tell a difference. Um, the 2.0 version will be capped at two bottles per PayPal address order person, but you might want that back up. I'm glad I have mine. So what do you think? Are you loving this collection as much as I am? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments. So final thoughts as a whole, I think this is my favorite collection I've swatched from any brand all year this year. Just every single polish was mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> when it came to picking favorites, I had the hardest time with this collection. I think you could pick up this entire collection and you'd be extremely happy with every single polish. But if you're not planning to do that and you just want to grab a few, here were, I think, my top picks. <laughs> I really loved Aretha. Um, this polish I knew I was going to like because I am a yellow polish person. I think they're beautiful and so fun. Um, but I have recently worn Glisten. I showed that polish in the video too. And I just saw this and I was reminded of Glisten. And I love Glisten. And I was like, there's no way this is going to top it. And I still don't think it did, but I do like it just as much. The green lean and the flakies, the way they shift in lower lighting, this one was stunning. I also was a big fan of Marilyn. Oh my gosh. I'm a sucker for orangey reds anyway, but this one with those hollow flakes, with that gold shimmer was so beautiful. It had kind of a jelly finish, so it was super squishy in the finished look, and it just really popped on my nails. My absolute favorite, I mean, I think you already probably can guess, 
is slug bug. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, come on. Now, I will say I hate the name. If you didn't know, I am so, so scared of slugs. Like, scared slash disgusted. Ooh, ugh, yuck, I hate the name. But I love this polish. I have nothing like it. It glows like nothing else. Look at the pictures. I don't think there's much else I can say. Don't care if you don't like blacks. I don't care if you don't like reds. I think everybody needs this polish. I'm thinking of getting a backup for my backup. <laughs> Hopefully today's video was helpful for you in deciding what to grab. If it was, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!